Howdy again, everybody. This is Doc with Thorofan coming to you with another segment. And unfortunately, we did hear the news this week of XY Jet suddenly passing away to what is at least right now being termed a fatal cardiac event. And I know there's a lot of different rumors swirling around there. There's a lot of questions being asked. But one of the things I did notice in reading the stories and some of the comments and, and things like that is there were a lot of questions raised about, well, do horses actually get heart attacks? Uh, is this a true condition? And uh, what, what are kind of the causes? Uh, there is some skepticism as to if these fatal arrhythmias uh, or fatal cardiac events really are just something that happens naturally or if there's another cause for them. So I figured that would be a wonderful way uh, to kind of help a little bit with some more thorough fan education as we go ahead and discuss fatal cardiac events. So when we talk about sudden cardiac death in racehorses, it's very important to remember that we're not talking about coronary artery disease, which is the main cause of heart attacks in humans. Horses do not develop the clogged arteries that lead to heart attacks like we do. When horses die from cardiac issues, it is usually due to one of two main things, either a rupture of the aorta or an electrical disturbance in their heart that is known as a fatal arrhythmia. Horses' hearts are huge, and they have to be to pump the blood necessary to keep the body tissues properly nourished during peak exertion. In order to get all that blood to the tissues, very large vessels are needed. When blood exits the heart to travel to the rest of the body, it does so via a vessel called the aorta. You can see the aorta outlined here in these pictures. In some horses, the walls of the aorta are not as strong as they should be, and as such are prone to first bulging, what is commonly known as an aneurysm, or rupturing completely. In most cases, this rupture is going to happen under the highest pressures the heart produces in blood flow, which of course happens in maximum exercise. When this catastrophic tear happens, the horse's blood volume no longer stays in the vessels, but spills out into the chest cavity. With enough blood loss, which can happen very quickly considering the size of the vessel, the horses can no longer support basic life functions, and quickly succumbs. There are usually no signs of an aortic rupture beforehand, and a horse will often just fall over or collapse after appearing perfectly fine. It is not until a necropsy is performed that the cause of death can truly be determined. The other main cause of cardiac deaths in horses, fatal arrhythmias, is something that is being studied a lot more of late in an effort to maybe catch them before a horse competes. In order to understand what happens in these cases, we first must understand the normal electrical activity in the heart. The heart is a muscle that contracts in a rhythmic pattern to allow for proper blood flow through its chambers and to the body. This contraction is controlled by an electrical impulse that starts at a special place called the SA node and then travels through the rest of the heart to cause those muscle cells to contract you can see the normal pattern of electrical activity here in this video. When everything works as it should, this is called a normal rhythm. When there is a disturbance in this system, that is what is known as an arrhythmia. The most common type of arrhythmia we tend to see in racehorses is what is known as atrial fibrillation, or AFib. This is where there is a loss of proper conduction of the contraction impulse in the upper chambers of the heart, or the atria. Instead of contracting in a normal fashion, the entire muscle of the atria just kind of wriggles around and doesn't have any uniformity to it, as can be seen here in this wonderfully modern video example. The ventricles, or lower chambers of the heart, still are able to contract and pump in a normal manner at this point, so the horse still has blood flowing to the organs and tissues at the proper volume. Sometimes symptoms of this arrhythmia can be seen in the form of a horse appearing very nervous, agitated, or showing signs of colic. Other times, it's completely silent and no symptoms are seen. Many arrhythmias can be transient as well, only showing up at certain times or under certain conditions. If they are present during the times of extreme exertion, such as in racing or intense training, the electrical disturbances can get so bad that the heart cannot contract properly at all, and that leads to sudden death due to lack of blood flow. Again, it can strike so suddenly that there are no symptoms at all and the horse just falls over, as was the case with homeboy Chris after his Preakness undercard victory a few years ago. What also has to be understood in these cases is that a lot of times it is an assumed cause of death in horses as you cannot see this condition in a necropsy. If everything else in the horse looks normal, 
then a lot of times in sudden death cases, this is what is presumed to be the most likely cause. The only way to know for sure that it was an arrhythmia would be to listening to the horse's heart with a stethoscope at the time to hear an irregular heartbeat, or to have what is known as an ECG set up on the horse that monitors the electrical activity of the heart in the horse. There is one other area of concern that comes up in the sudden deaths due to arrhythmias in horses, and that is the use of race day medications. Another aspect of heart muscles being able to contract normally is having the right balance of electrolytes like calcium, sodium, and potassium in the blood. The level of these electrolytes can be altered slightly in the horse with the use of certain drugs such as Lasix. And so some contend that a horse that may be more prone to developing arrhythmias can have the condition exacerbated to the point of it becoming a fatal one because these levels were altered after race day medication administration. So, if we can see arrhythmias, or hear them in horses, why can't we prevent these deaths from happening? Well, there are a few reasons for that. The first is that often these arrhythmias can be transient, as we stated before, so a vet may just not hear or see it at a particular point in time if it just happens not to be there then. There is a push of sorts now to perhaps having a thorough cardiac exam be part of all pre-race exams for horses before competing and hoping to catch these abnormalities before a horse races. The other is that often there are no symptoms, so a trainer would have no way of knowing their horse even has one. One thing that is being done more to this end is to have portable ECGs attached to horses during training to look for these arrhythmias. This is something that is being done more by some smaller training stables, both as a way to monitor for any issues, but also as a way to gauge their horse's true fitness levels in training. Research is also underway at many universities on this very topic in hopes of finding new tests or ways to determine issues and hopefully intervene before it becomes a fatal situation. Sadly, at least for the foreseeable future, these tragic events will still occur in all equine events from time to time, but hopefully in far lower numbers as we get better at finding and correcting them. So I hope that kind of helps at least answer some questions, explain a little bit of background as, as to what we're talking about when we do talk about these sudden cardiac deaths, sudden cardiac events in horses, and, and they are really tragic. Um, you know, certainly we would love to be able to prevent a, any kind of cardiac death happening in any animal, uh, you know, ourselves included for that matter. But uh, unfortunately, these things are going to occur from time to time. And hopefully this did give you guys at least a little bit of just the basic knowledge and education to understand what is going on in these situations and uh, from there, as we always say at Thorofan, we give you the information. You're free to make your own determinations from there. So I am Doc for Thorofan. We will be back again, of course, next week with another wonderful segment. And remember that our survey is still out there to see if your selections for the Eclipse Award winners match with the media set. So you can check that out on our website and our newsletter as well. And as always, for the most up-to-date, accurate, and non-biased information when it comes to everything fandom and thoroughbred racing, there's only one place to turn, and that is right here at Thorofan.